Welcome to your video on Introductions to Systems of Equations. When we talk about a system of equations, it's important to know that there's other vocabulary that can go along with that. First, you know that it's also called simultaneous equations. Other times we might say it's two equations with two unknowns. So when we talk about what is a system, it's really just two equations with two variables. So below here, you'll find an example. Our two equations are y equals 3x plus 4 and y equals negative 2x plus 1. And you may recognize these equations as equations for lines. The first line would have a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 4, whereas the second line would have a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 1. And so together, these two equations make what we call a system. And we've worked on solving equations, and we just finished up solving inequalities. So now we're going to work on how do we solve a system of equations. So we're actually going to be solving two equations at the same time, which is where that word simultaneous equations comes from. So when we look at solving these two or solving this system, we have to come up with an answer for both x and y. And so the next thing we're going to look at is what is actually a solution. We have two definitions or two ideas that we talk about when we think about what a solution is. First, it's an ordered pair that satisfies both equations. Now, you may not know exactly what that means, so let's just kind of break down this vocabulary. An ordered pair is simply just an x, y point or coordinate. And when we talk about satisfying both equations, what that means is that you're going to plug the ordered pair into the equations to see if it works. So you would take the x value from the ordered pair and you'd substitute it in, and you'd also take the y value and substitute it in. And then what you would do is simplify your equation, and if the two sides are the same, it would work. And notice that it has to satisfy both equations. It can't just satisfy one, it has to satisfy both. Okay, another idea that we can think about when we talk about a solution to a system is it is the point where the two lines intersect. So if you think back to when I said what a system is and I gave you the example of two equations that represent lines, if you were to actually graph those lines, you could solve the system by simply looking at where the two lines cross or where they intersect. So when we talk about a solution, the fact that the ordered pair works in both equations means that that point is on both of the lines and in fact, that point is where the two lines intersect. So these two ideas of a solution um, work together hand in hand. Throughout this first part of the unit, we are going to be learning different ways to solve a system. And in fact, I just talked about one of those ways. The first is by graphing. And there will be later videos that break down these different methods. For now, we just want you to be familiar with at least the three names. So first is graphing. Second is a method called substitution, and you can think about what the word substitution means. It would mean replacing. And then third is elimination, and elimination means we are actually eliminating something. Sometimes elimination can also be called linear combination. You may run across that if you're, if you're ever doing work with it, but either elimination or linear combination. Okay, so the first thing we're going to practice is just how do we work with this idea of a solution um, for a system? So we're going to go through a couple of examples, and the directions are the same for both examples. Determine whether the given point is a solution for the system. So you'll notice the system there. We definitely have two equations with two variables. And then the point, 1, 3, we're trying to figure out, is that the point where these two lines cross? Or, in other words, is, does this point or is this point going to satisfy both equations? So what I'd like you to start by doing is labeling your ordered pair x, y. So 1 is our x coordinate and 3 is our y coordinate. And then what we're going to do with this is plug the ordered pair into both equations to see if it works. So in the top equation, I'm going to replace y. Actually, the top equation, let's think about that first. So y equals 5x minus 2. I'm going to replace the y with 3. Everything else is going to come down. And then I'm going to replace the x with 1. And note the parentheses there. I think that's important because we want to remember that 5x means multiplication. So now you have to think back to your order of operations. And we have to multiply first. So 5 times 1 is 5. 
and then we can subtract, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So this is good. We know that this ordered pair um, satisfies the first equation. And the check mark there means, yes, it checks out. It does not mean that it's wrong. But if you remember, we talked about the fact that the ordered pair has to work in both equations. So the fact that it worked in the first one is not enough. We have to also plug it into the second equation. And be careful, there's a negative there in front of that um, 3. Make sure that that gets brought along. So we're going to replace the y with 3. We're going to bring everything else down like we just did. Replace the x with 1. And then we're going to start to simplify. So the 3 comes down. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. We're going to add 6. We simplify again and we get 3 equals 3. So this one checks out as well. So then the answer here would be yes, this is a solution. So if you were to plot both of these lines on graph paper and look at where they would cross, they would cross at exactly the point 1, 3. Our second example is going to look just like our first example. We have two equations. We have an ordered pair. And we are going to plug that ordered pair into both equations to see if it works. Um, for most of you, it's going to be a good idea to go back and label that ordered pair just so that you get the variables in the right spots. So in the first equation, we are going to replace y with 9 and x with negative 1. We bring the 9 down. We multiply the 14 times the negative 1. And then we add in the 5. Simplifying the right-hand side, negative 14 plus 5 is negative 9. And we have a little problem here because 9 is not equal to negative 9. Okay? That means that this point is not a solution. If it doesn't work in one equation, we don't have to go any further because it can't satisfy both. So in a way, it's kind of nice because our work is left. So it is not a solution and you would just answer no. This concludes your introduction video. You can now begin working on the problems related to this lesson. Throw this aside.